Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene is calling out Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, tweeting, quote, I have repeatedly asked you to debate me, but you have been a coward and can't even respond. But you go on CNN and lie about me. When are you going to be an adult? Actually debate me on policy instead of run your mouth like a teenage girl. Here's uh, the comments in question. These individuals that Kevin McCarthy has appointed, chosen to appoint to committee, George Santos claimed that his grandparents were in the Holocaust. That was a lie, a disgusting lie. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene regularly trafficking in anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Paul Gosar inciting, these are individuals, Marjorie Taylor Greene included, inciting violence against specific members in the body. He has appointed all three of them to House committees, not just one, but multiple. Marjorie Taylor Greene, who was engaging in 9-11 conspiracy theories, Kevin McCarthy appointed her to the Homeland Security Committee. So there is really no consistency here. Joining us now to weigh in is host of the Savvy Sabs podcast and co-host of the Revolutionary Blackout Network, Sabrina Salvati. Welcome back, Sabrina. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for joining us. All right. Weigh in here. Is, is Marjorie Taylor Greene being fair or unfair here, saying that AOC isn't willing to debate her, and then AOC coming back and saying, we have opportunities to talk uh, on the House floor all the time, and you're barely around? You know, who, who scored more points in this exchange? Oh, dear, these two. I would say it doesn't necessarily need to be a debate, but obviously there should be a discussion between the two. They've gone back and forth for quite a while. Uh, I will say in reference to AOC's comment there on CNN about there being no consistency, there actually is consistency. The consistency is that regardless if someone from your political party is correct or not, the consistency is that you will support them and defend them. And this doesn't just happen with the Republican Party. It also happens with the Democratic Party as well. And AOC herself has been guilty of doing this. And I'll give an example in reference to Brett Kavanaugh and Joe Biden. If we go back to the Brett Kavanaugh allegations, he was accused of sexual assault. Remember, the Republican politicians in D.C. supported and defended Brett Kavanaugh. The Democrat politicians did not. If we want to compare that to Joe Biden, Joe Biden also was accused of sexual assault and the Republican Party uh, opposed Joe Biden and the Democratic Party defended Joe Biden and supported him. And that includes AOC. So I think a big part of the problem is the political parties, regardless if someone from their party is incorrect or not, they will still defend them as long as they're on their team. Yeah, I, I don't want AOC and Marjorie Taylor Greene to have a debate. I want them to have a like a conversation and work together on things they might agree on, which I think ostensibly would be some aspects of foreign policy. Marjorie Taylor Greene is one of the uh, members, the minority members of the Republican uh, caucus, trying to to push for a less interventionist posture toward Ukraine, for example. That is something ostensibly that many on the left would support to the extent AOC is a <laughs> occasionally a representative of a of a leftist progressivism, maybe she would show some interest in joining in that effort. She's certainly been asked about it at a, quite a few town halls. Uh, but but AOC, I mean, both of them, I guess, but especially AOC, seem to be in the low, well. Well, she's part of the the MTG is part of the Republican Party, so I can't ever be seen to be working with her at all or agreeing with her, even if even if we might agree. Is is that what's going on? I think that that's a big part of it is because of the fact that she does belong to the opposing party. But at the same time, you know, I would like to see AOC have this same type of courage uh, and, and, and voice here in reference to some of the corporate Democrats in her own party. You know, where is the same type of fire and energy from AOC in reference to people like Hakeem Jeffries, who publicly has condemned progressive policies and progressives in D.C. like her. You know, there's nothing there. She's going to back him and support him. So I think it's really easy to appear to be left when the person in power, the president in power at that time, was a Republican. And then once it switched to Joe Biden and the president in power was a Democrat, all of a sudden we saw 
progressives like AOC cower and defend Joe Biden and say that Joe Biden is doing a great job. So I think neither one of them have really been consistent. And this has been a problem we've seen across the board. Yeah, I think that's a really uh, important point that the energy that she's bringing to talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene is not the same energy that she's bringing to talking about some of these other issues. Even the context of all of this that we're talking about today is in response to Ilhan Omar being kicked off of her committee, right? And many people have observed that she gave this passionate speech, which for some reason, in, in which for some reason she adopted the cadence of a, of a Baptist preacher, but even putting that to the side, you very rarely see that kind of energy being brought for people like Hakeem Jeffries, people like Joe Biden, people who have had the power to actually enact progressive policy over the last two years. I want to ask you specifically, though, about this, this Jewish space laser accusation. What people have been saying is that if we're really concerned about anti-Semitism, there are myriad examples that you can p pick from Republicans that hasn't resulted in them having the same kind of uh, censorship within the House that Ilhan Omar has been subjected to. The main one is this claim that Marjorie Taylor Greene talked about Jewish space lasers. It's from a post from, I think, back in 2018 on her um, uh, Facebook, where she talks about space lasers being the cause of a number of wildfires that were going on at the time. The Jewish part of it is not actually part of the quote, but it's she's she has theorized that the space lasers, generally speaking, are funded by the Rothschild banking firm, and it's part of those kind of uh, wink, wink, nod, nod accusations of you know glo globalists and Soros that many people read as uh, anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Do you think it's fair to make the com the co comparison here um, that 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 Marjorie Taylor Greene is is equally uh, or is in fact has been anti-Semitic and the Republican? party has ignored it. Do you think that Democrats are getting over their skis, out over their skis a little bit, trying to create Jewish space lasers as a phrase that wasn't actually said by Marjorie Taylor Greene? Yeah, I think it's a bit of a, a reach here for AOC to make that accusation. But I will say, I don't really think at the end of the day, it's really about anti-Semitism. I think it's about just uh, supporting your party. For example, Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell were also removed. And one of the statements that AOC also made is that this is about removing a woman of color. But she leaves out the fact that you have two white men that were part of your party that also were removed as well. So I don't think it's even about that. I think it's just about making sure that the party who has control of the House right now, which is the Republican Party, that they gain control of those committee seat assignments. And I think that's really what this is about. So unfortunately, this goes back to the midterms where the Democratic Party seemed to focus a lot of their attention on those Senate seats, which I do understand was important. But at the same time, they weren't paying attention to the seats in the House, and the Republican Party was able to gain back control of the House. So this is just a result. What are you hoping to see out of the State of the Union tonight? Oh, dear. That should be very interesting. I I'm willing, I'm, I'm serious, curious to hear if Joe Biden is going to address the policing issue in this country. We just saw what happened with Tyree Nichols. Uh, there was another incident with uh, an amputee who was killed by the police. So I'm curious to hear what he's going to say about policing. If he's going to say that police need to be funded more, that, that would be really interesting. I'm also here, I'm curious to hear about his statements about the economy, because Joe Biden has been saying that the economy is doing great. Meanwhile, Google and companies like Amazon are laying off thousands of employees. People are being laid off left and right. The, the grocery store price, uh, prices are still relatively expensive. I just paid like $9 for a carton of eggs. So I'm curious to see if he's still going to try to tout that line, that the economy is doing great when the American people know economically we're hurting fundamentally. Hmm. I think that's a really good point about whether or not we're going to hear anything about policing. Uh, Joe Biden was elected in the middle of the, the George Floyd uprising. He did not bend the knee or cater at all to activists, despite it being the peak of that movement. And activists basically have not caused there to be any consequences for the Democratic Party. There has been no connection uh, between their demands and a willingness to vote for Joe Biden because of the fear that Donald Trump or some other Republican could get in office if they don't. So I, it wouldn't be surprising to me if Joe Biden didn't respond at all to Tyree Nichols or, you know, any calls for reform to policing in this country, because his response in the past has been uh, fund the police harder. But I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for that. Thank you so much for joining us today, Savvy. Thanks so much. We'll have more rising for you right after this. Stick around.